Officer Ethan Brooks cruised through the quiet, tree-lined streets of a wealthy suburb, his patrol car gliding silently past large, immaculate houses. It was a routine he had grown accustomed to, one that allowed him to relax slightly, knowing that this part of the city rarely saw any serious crime. The sun was setting, casting long shadows across the perfectly manicured lawns and driveways filled with luxury vehicles. For Ethan, this was just another evening on the job, a chance to kill time before his shift ended. Despite the calm exterior of the neighborhood, Ethan's senses were always on alert, scanning for anything that seemed out of place. His eyes narrowed as he noticed a sleek, black, luxury car turning onto the street ahead, its headlights cutting through the dusk. The car moved smoothly, but something about it caught Ethan's attention. It wasn't just the vehicle itself, but the person behind the wheel, a young black man, alone, driving through this predominantly white neighborhood. A wave of suspicion washed over Ethan, his mind racing with possibilities. What was this young man doing here? Was he lost, or was he here for another reason? The thoughts came unbidden, shaped by years of ingrained prejudice. Without a second thought, Ethan decided to pull the car over, eager to investigate and assert his authority. After all, in his mind, something about the situation just didn't feel right. The black luxury car slowed to a stop as Ethan turned on his flashing lights and signaled for the driver to pull over. The car's engine hummed quietly, a testament to its power and expense. But to Ethan, it represented something more, a challenge to the social order he believed in. As he approached the vehicle, his eyes scanned the surroundings, taking in the quiet houses and empty streets. There was no one around to witness the encounter, no one to question his motives. Ethan's heart quickened as he neared the driver's side window, his hand instinctively resting on the butt of his service weapon. He wasn't expecting trouble, but years on, the force had taught him to always be prepared. The window rolled down smoothly, revealing a young man in his early 20s with dark skin and short, well-groomed hair. He wore a casual yet stylish outfit, but it was the calm expression on his face that struck Ethan the most. The young man didn't look nervous or anxious, as Ethan had expected. Instead, he looked at the officer with a steady gaze, his hands resting calmly on the steering wheel. This lack of fear, this composure, only served to irritate Ethan further. He had expected submission, maybe even fear, but not this quiet confidence. The car, the demeanor, the situation, all of it seemed out of place in Ethan's mind, and he was determined to find out why. As Ethan stood by the driver's window, his mind was already made up. The young man didn't belong here, not in this neighborhood, not in this car. The thoughts raced through his mind, fueled by years of biases that he hadn't fully acknowledged. To him, the situation was clear. This was a case of someone overstepping their bounds, and it was his job to put things right. The young man's calmness, his confidence, only reinforced Ethan's belief that something was off. License and registration, Ethan demanded, his tone cold and authoritative. He didn't bother with pleasantries. This wasn't a routine stop in his eyes. The young man reached over to the passenger seat, retrieving his documents with a practiced ease that suggested this wasn't his first encounter with law enforcement. He handed them to Ethan without a word, his expression unchanged, as if he knew exactly how this interaction would go. Ethan took the documents and began to examine them, but his mind wasn't focused on the details. He was already thinking ahead, considering his next move, how he would handle the situation. The more he looked at the young man, the more he felt the need to assert his authority, to remind this person of his place. But underneath the surface, a small voice nagged at Ethan, warning him that something about this situation wasn't as it seemed. He ignored it, letting his prejudices guide his actions instead. So Ethan couldn't help but feel an increasing sense of irritation as he continued to scrutinize the young man. There was something about the way he sat there, composed and unshaken, that unsettled Ethan. Most people in this situation would have shown some sign of discomfort, a flicker of anxiety in their eyes, perhaps a slight tremor in their hands. But this young man seemed different, unafraid, almost indifferent to the officer's presence. The young man, Tyler Lewis, was no stranger to situations like this. Growing up as the son of a prominent figure in law enforcement, Tyler had learned from an early age how to handle himself with poise and dignity. 
even in the face of unwarranted suspicion. He had been taught to stay calm, to never give anyone a reason to doubt his intentions or integrity. And so Tyler sat there, his eyes meeting Ethan's with a level gaze, offering nothing for the officer to latch on to. To Ethan, Tyler's demeanor was almost provocative. It was as if the young man was silently challenging him, refusing to be intimidated, refusing to play the role that Ethan had unconsciously assigned him. This only fueled Ethan's determination to find something, anything, that would justify his actions. He couldn't understand why this young man's calmness bothered him so much, but it did, and that irritation drove him to push harder, to dig deeper into a situation that was rapidly spiraling out of control. Ethan decided that a simple check of Tyler's license and registration wasn't enough. His gut told him there was more to this situation, something lurking just beneath the surface that needed to be exposed. Step out of the vehicle, Ethan ordered, his voice sharp and commanding. He wasn't asking. It was a demand, one that brooked no argument. Tyler hesitated for a brief moment, then nodded, understanding that compliance was his best option. As Tyler opened the door and stepped out, Ethan immediately noticed the young man's height and athletic build. Tyler stood a few inches taller than Ethan, and his presence was imposing despite his calm demeanor. Ethan's frustration mounted. He wanted to see fear, to see Tyler shrink back. But instead, the young man remained composed, standing straight, his expression neutral. This only served to heighten Ethan's need to assert his authority. Hands on the hood, Ethan barked, and Tyler complied without protest. Ethan began to frisk him, his movements rougher than necessary, but Tyler didn't flinch. As Ethan searched for any excuse to escalate the situation, he found none. No weapons, no drugs, nothing that could even remotely justify the level of force Ethan was using. Yet, Ethan continued, determined to assert control over a situation that was slipping through his fingers. Ethan stepped back, his frustration evident as he looked Tyler up and down. There was nothing to be found, no excuse to take this any further. But Ethan wasn't ready to let it go. What are you doing in this neighborhood? He demanded, his tone laced with contempt. It was a loaded question, one that implied Tyler had no right to be there, driving an expensive car in a place that Ethan subconsciously deemed off-limits to someone like him. Tyler met Ethan's gaze steadily, his expression unwavering. I'm just heading home, he replied calmly. But his words did nothing to pacify Ethan. Instead, they seemed to provoke him further. Ethan didn't like the idea that this young man could afford to live in a neighborhood like this, driving a car that most people could only dream of. It didn't fit the narrative that Ethan had constructed in his mind, and it gnawed at him. Home? Ethan repeated, incredulous. He looked at Tyler with a mixture of disbelief and disdain, as if the very notion was absurd. You expect me to believe that? Ethan's voice was rising now, betraying his growing agitation. He wasn't just questioning Tyler's words. He was questioning his very existence in this space, as if Tyler's mere presence was an affront to everything Ethan believed in. But Tyler remained calm, refusing to give Ethan the reaction he was seeking. Tyler's calm defiance was starting to wear on Ethan. No matter how much he pushed, Tyler wouldn't crack. There was no anger, no fear just a quiet resolve that seemed to radiate from the young man. Yes, home, Tyler said evenly, his eyes never leaving Ethan's. I live just a few blocks away. There was a firmness in Tyler's voice that made it clear he wasn't going to be intimidated, no matter how hard Ethan tried. For a moment, Ethan was at a loss for words. The way Tyler spoke, the way he carried himself, it was almost as if he was the one in control, not the officer. This realization only made Ethan more determined to reassert his authority. We'll see about that, Ethan muttered, more to himself than to Tyler. He glanced down at Tyler's driver's license again, as if searching for some discrepancy, some reason to prolong the encounter. But Tyler didn't waver. He stood there, hands still resting on the hood of the car, waiting patiently for Ethan to finish. It was clear that Tyler knew his rights, knew exactly how far Ethan could push without crossing a line. And in that moment, Ethan began to realize that he was the one being tested, that Tyler was watching him just as closely as he was watching Tyler. This was no longer just about a traffic stop. This was about power, and Ethan was slowly coming to the realization that he was losing. 
As the minutes ticked by, it became increasingly clear to Ethan that he was grasping at straws. There was nothing illegal about Tyler's presence in the neighborhood, and every moment that passed without incident made Ethan's actions seem more and more unreasonable. But admitting that he had made a mistake was out of the question. Ethan's pride wouldn't allow it. He had to find something, anything, that would justify his actions. Ethan stepped back and began pacing, his mind racing for a solution. He could feel the tension in the air, the weight of the situation pressing down on him. In his years on the force, Ethan had rarely questioned his authority. He was used to being in control, to having his decisions respected without question. But now, for the first time in a long while, he felt that control slipping away, and it terrified him. Tyler, on the other hand, remained composed. He watched Ethan with a steady gaze, understanding what was happening. Tyler knew that the officer was trying to reassert his authority, trying to regain control of a situation that had gotten away from him. But Tyler wasn't going to make it easy. He had done nothing wrong, and he wasn't about to let Ethan's misplaced authority dictate the outcome of this encounter. Tyler's quiet strength only served to highlight Ethan's growing desperation. Desperate to regain the upper hand, Ethan decided to switch tactics. He walked back over to Tyler and gestured toward the luxury car parked by the curb. Are you sure this car is yours? He asked, his tone dripping with skepticism. It was a question designed to undermine Tyler, to make him feel small, to plant a seed of doubt in his mind. Ethan hoped that by questioning Tyler's ownership of the car, he could regain control of the situation. Tyler didn't flinch. He met Ethan's gaze with the same calm, unyielding confidence that had defined the entire encounter. Yes, it's mine, Tyler replied, his voice steady. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the key fob, holding it up for Ethan to see. The key matched the car perfectly, and the gesture left no room for doubt. Tyler wasn't just saying the car was his, he was proving it. Ethan stared at the key fob, his frustration mounting. He had hoped that Tyler would hesitate, that he would show some sign of weakness. But instead, Tyler's response only reinforced the young man's control over the situation. Ethan realized that he was running out of options. He had no legitimate reason to continue the stop, but his pride wouldn't let him back down. The more Tyler stood his ground, the more Ethan felt his authority slipping through his fingers. Tyler's unyielding composure throughout the entire encounter was starting to get under Ethan's skin. No matter what he did, Tyler refused to be intimidated. The young man's calmness, his quiet confidence, was like a mirror reflecting back everything that Ethan didn't want to see about himself. It was as if Tyler was silently challenging Ethan to do better, to rise above the prejudices that had led to this situation in the first place. Ethan tried to maintain his facade of authority, but he could feel it cracking. Tyler's unwavering demeanor was forcing him to confront the uncomfortable truth that he was in the wrong. The more he looked at Tyler, the more he realized that this young man wasn't just a random driver who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Tyler was someone who knew exactly who he was and what he stood for, and that knowledge made Ethan's actions seem all the more petty and unjustified. The realization hit Ethan hard. He had been trying to assert control over someone who had done nothing to warrant such treatment, and now he was faced with the consequences of his own actions. Tyler's composure had stripped away the thin veneer of authority that Ethan had been clinging to, leaving him exposed to the reality of his own misconduct. Yet despite the growing sense of shame gnawing at him, Ethan was still reluctant to admit defeat. He stood there, grappling with the cognitive dissonance between his ingrained prejudices and the undeniable truth in front of him. Tyler wasn't just unyielding. He was right, and deep down, Ethan knew it. As Ethan stood there, the initial rush of power he had felt at the start of the stop began to dissipate, replaced by a gnawing sense of unease. He couldn't shake the feeling that he was on the brink of something that could have serious repercussions, not just for Tyler, but for himself as well. The confidence that had once fueled his actions was now working against him, making him second-guess every decision he had made during the encounter. The street, which had once seemed so quiet and secure, now felt ominously empty. The luxurious homes that lined the road, the very symbols of stability and order that Ethan had unconsciously believed he was protecting, seemed indifferent to the unfolding drama. The longer the silence stretched between him and Tyler, 
the more Ethan's discomfort grew. He found himself wishing he could just end the encounter, but his pride kept him rooted to the spot. Tyler's unwavering composure only made matters worse. Ethan could see no trace of fear or uncertainty in the young man's eyes, only a quiet determination that seemed to pierce through the layers of authority Ethan had wrapped himself in. This was not how Ethan had imagined the encounter would go, and the unsettling feeling in the pit of his stomach only deepened as he realized that he had no idea who Tyler really was or what consequences might follow from this night. As Ethan continued to stand before Tyler, the weight of his actions began to settle heavily on his shoulders. The realization hit him like a cold splash of water. This entire situation might have been a grave mistake. He had let his prejudices guide his actions, pulling over a young man who had done nothing wrong simply because he didn't fit the image of what Ethan thought belonged in this neighborhood. The certainty he had once felt was slipping away, replaced by a creeping doubt that gnawed at his confidence. For the first time, Ethan allowed himself to consider the possibility that Tyler might be someone of importance, someone who could turn this encounter into a much bigger problem for Ethan than he had anticipated. The way Tyler carried himself, his calm demeanor, the car he was driving, none of it pointed to someone who could be easily dismissed or intimidated. In fact, the more Ethan thought about it, the more he realized that Tyler might hold far more power than he had initially assumed. This realization only served to heighten Ethan's anxiety. What if Tyler wasn't just another random driver? What if he was someone connected, someone with the means to make life very difficult for a police officer who had stepped out of line? The fear of potential repercussions began to bubble up inside Ethan, and for the first time, he felt a real, tangible fear. Not for Tyler, but for himself. The realization that he might have made a serious miscalculation left Ethan reeling, and he struggled to maintain his composure as the weight of his mistake became clearer. After what felt like an eternity, Ethan realized that he had no choice but to let Tyler go. There was no legitimate reason to hold him any longer, and the longer the encounter dragged on, the more it threatened to spiral into something that Ethan couldn't control. With a heavy sigh, Ethan handed Tyler's documents back to him, trying to maintain some semblance of authority as he did so. You're free to go, Ethan muttered, though the words felt hollow even as he said them. Tyler took the documents without a word, his expression unchanged. He didn't offer any thanks or acknowledgement, just a curt nod before turning back to his car. As he slid into the driver's seat and started the engine, Ethan watched him closely, his mind racing with a mix of relief and anxiety. The luxury car pulled away from the curb smoothly, disappearing down the quiet street as if nothing had happened. But for Ethan, the encounter was far from over. As he watched the taillights fade into the distance, the unease that had been gnawing at him only deepened. Ethan couldn't shake the feeling that he had just made a serious mistake, one that could come back to haunt him in ways he couldn't yet imagine. The neighborhood was quiet once more, but the silence felt oppressive, filled with the weight of what had just transpired. Ethan stood there for a long moment, alone with his thoughts, before finally getting back into his patrol car. But even as he drove away, the sense of foreboding remained, hanging over him like a dark cloud that refused to dissipate. The next morning, Ethan arrived at the police station with a sense of lingering dread. He tried to shake it off as he walked through the station's familiar halls, nodding to a few colleagues as he passed. But something felt different today, something he couldn't quite put his finger on. As he approached the briefing room, he noticed a group of officers gathered near the entrance, their expressions a mix of curiosity and excitement. Curious himself, Ethan moved closer, trying to catch the snippets of their conversation. Did you hear? We've got a new chief, one of the officers said in a low voice. He's supposed to be tough, doesn't take any nonsense. Ethan's heart skipped a beat at the mention of a new boss. He hadn't heard anything about this, and the news took him by surprise. As the officers continued to talk, Ethan caught the name, Chief Marcus Lewis. The name sounded vaguely familiar, but Ethan couldn't place it. All he knew was that a new chief meant change, and change was rarely easy. Ethan made his way into the briefing room, where the atmosphere was charged with anticipation. As the officers took their seats, the door at the front of the room opened, and Chief Marcus Lewis entered. Ethan's eyes widened as he took in the sight of the new chief, 
a tall, commanding black man in his late forties, with a stern expression that left no room for doubt about who was in charge. The chief's presence immediately commanded respect, and Ethan felt a wave of unease wash over him. There was something familiar about the chief, something that made Ethan's heart race with a sense of impending doom. The day had barely begun when Ethan received the call he had been dreading. His phone buzzed with a message from the chief's office, summoning him to a private meeting. Ethan's heart sank as he read the words, a cold sweat breaking out on the back of his neck. He had no idea what the meeting was about, but the sense of foreboding that had been hanging over him since the previous night intensified. Ethan tried to tell himself that it was just routine, that the new chief was probably just getting to know the officers under his command, but deep down, he knew better. As Ethan made his way to the chief's office, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was walking into a trap. The hallways that he had walked countless times before now felt like they were closing in on him, the walls pressing closer with each step. By the time he reached the chief's door, his nerves were frayed, his mind racing with worst-case scenarios. He paused for a moment, taking a deep breath to steady himself before finally knocking on the door. Come in, came the chief's voice from the other side, calm but authoritative. Ethan pushed the door open and stepped inside, his eyes immediately meeting the chief's piercing gaze. Chief Lewis sat behind a large wooden desk, his expression unreadable as he gestured for Ethan to take a seat. The tension in the room was palpable, and Ethan's heart pounded in his chest as he sat down. He had no idea what was coming, but the look in the chief's eyes told him that whatever it was, it wasn't going to be good. Ethan sat stiffly in the chair across from Chief Lewis, every muscle in his body tense with anticipation. The room was quiet, save for the distant hum of the station outside. Chief Lewis leaned back in his chair, studying Ethan with a calm, measured gaze that made the officer feel like he was being dissected. The silence stretched on, heavy and oppressive, until finally the chief spoke. Officer Brooks, Lewis began, his voice even, I wanted to discuss an incident that occurred last night. Ethan's stomach dropped. He had feared this moment since the encounter with Tyler, and now it was here. He tried to keep his expression neutral, but he could feel the panic rising within him. Yes, sir, Ethan replied, his voice betraying the slightest tremor. Chief Lewis didn't immediately respond. Instead, he reached into his desk drawer and pulled out a small stack of papers, placing them on the desk in front of him. He slid the top document across the desk to Ethan, who reluctantly picked it up. As Ethan read the document, his blood ran cold. It was a detailed report of the traffic stop from the night before, complete with a complaint lodged against him by none other than Tyler Lewis, the chief's son. Ethan's eyes darted back up to meet Chief Lewis's gaze and suddenly everything clicked into place. The luxury car, the young man's unshakable confidence, the new chief's arrival, it was all connected. Ethan's mind raced as he tried to come up with an explanation, but he knew there was no talking his way out of this. The shocking revelation left him reeling, struggling to comprehend the full extent of the mistake he had made. Chief Lewis didn't say anything immediately after Ethan's reaction to the report. Instead, he let the silence fill the room, allowing the gravity of the situation to sink in. Ethan felt the weight of the silence pressing down on him, as if the very air had grown thicker, harder to breathe. The chief's calm, composed demeanor only served to heighten Ethan's anxiety. It was clear that Lewis was in complete control of the situation, and Ethan was left feeling powerless a stark contrast to the authority he had tried to wield the night before. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Chief Lewis spoke. Do you understand the seriousness of this situation, Officer Brooks? His voice was calm, almost too calm, which made it all the more intimidating. Ethan nodded, unable to find his voice. The realization that he had humiliated the son of his new boss, a man who clearly commanded respect and authority, was sinking in fast and the fact that Chief Lewis hadn't yet raised his voice or shown anger was perhaps the most terrifying aspect of the encounter. Lewis's silence was a calculated move, one that spoke louder than words ever could. It conveyed a controlled, deliberate response, one that made it clear that Lewis wasn't just going to let this slide, but was also giving Ethan enough rope to see how he would handle himself. The Chief wasn't just concerned with the incident. He was assessing Ethan's character, his judgment, 
and whether or not he could trust him going forward. For Ethan, the silence was suffocating, each second a reminder of how deeply he had messed up. After the meeting with Chief Lewis, Ethan left the office with a heavy heart and a mind swirling with anxiety. He couldn't stop thinking about the encounter, replaying it over and over in his head, analyzing every word, every gesture, trying to decipher the chief's intentions. The revelation that he had humiliated the son of his new boss was bad enough, but the uncertainty of what would happen next was even worse. Ethan's paranoia began to grow, fueled by the fear of the unknown. Every time he walked through the station, Ethan felt as if eyes were on him, watching his every move. Colleagues who used to greet him with friendly nods now seemed to look at him with suspicion or pity. Ethan couldn't tell if it was real or just his imagination, but the effect was the same. He felt like he was under constant scrutiny. The weight of the encounter with Tyler, combined with the pressure of working under Chief Lewis, was taking a toll on his mental state. At home, things weren't any better. Ethan's wife noticed the change in him immediately. He was more withdrawn, more irritable, and seemed to be constantly on edge. She asked him what was wrong, but Ethan couldn't bring himself to tell her the truth. The fear of what might happen, the paranoia that had taken root in his mind, made it impossible for him to relax. Even in the privacy of his own home, Ethan couldn't escape the feeling that his world was slowly unraveling, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. In the days that followed, Chief Lewis began assigning Ethan to tasks that were far from routine. These special assignments were clearly designed to test Ethan's resolve and his ability to handle pressure. Each task was challenging in its own way, requiring Ethan to navigate difficult situations with a level of discretion and professionalism that had been sorely lacking during his encounter with Tyler. It was as if Lewis was deliberately pushing Ethan to his limits, watching closely to see how he would perform. The assignments ranged from mediating disputes in high-tension neighborhoods to handling sensitive cases that required a delicate touch. Ethan quickly realized that there was no room for error. Every move he made was being evaluated. The pressure was immense, but he knew that if he wanted to salvage his career and regain any semblance of respect, he had to step up. Yet the weight of his past mistakes hung over him like a dark cloud, making it difficult to focus on the tasks at hand. As Ethan carried out these assignments, he began to notice something unsettling. Each task seemed to bring him face to face with situations that mirrored his encounter with Tyler. Whether it was dealing with individuals from marginalized communities or handling cases where implicit biases could easily cloud judgment, Ethan was forced to confront the very flaws that had led to his current predicament. It was as if Chief Lewis was not only testing his resolve, but also forcing him to reckon with the consequences of his own actions, challenging him to become a better officer, or face the consequences of failing to do so. Ethan's paranoia deepened as he became increasingly convinced that Chief Lewis was watching his every move. Whether it was on the street, in the station, or even during his off hours, Ethan felt the weight of invisible eyes following him, scrutinizing every action, every decision. The feeling of being under constant surveillance was suffocating, and it began to affect his ability to perform even the most basic tasks. Every time he received a new assignment, he wondered if it was a setup, a test designed to catch him off guard. At the station, Ethan couldn't shake the feeling that his colleagues were in on it too. Conversations would halt when he entered a room, and he often caught people glancing at him out of the corner of their eyes. Even casual remarks or offhand comments took on a sinister tone in Ethan's mind, as if everyone around him was waiting for him to slip up. The pressure was relentless and Ethan began to feel like he was living in a constant state of heightened alertness, always looking over his shoulder. The stress began to take a toll on Ethan's health. He found it difficult to sleep, his nights plagued by nightmares and restless thoughts. He became jumpy, reacting to the smallest of sounds or movements as if they were threats. His relationships with his family and friends began to suffer as well, as his paranoia made him withdraw further into himself. The sense of isolation only added to his growing despair. Ethan knew that he couldn't continue like this, but the fear of what would happen if he let his guard down kept him trapped in a cycle of anxiety and self-doubt. At home, the strain on Ethan's family was becoming impossible to ignore. His wife, Sarah, had always been his anchor, 
but lately she felt more like a stranger to him. Ethan's constant anxiety, his unpredictable moods, and his growing paranoia were wearing her down. She had tried to be patient, to offer support and understanding, but as the days turned into weeks, it became clear that something was deeply wrong. Sarah often found Ethan sitting in the dark, staring blankly at nothing, lost in thoughts that he wouldn't or couldn't share with her. The man she had married, who once exuded confidence and control, was now a shell of his former self. The distance between them grew with each passing day, and despite her best efforts, Sarah couldn't reach him. Every attempt to talk about what was happening was met with silence or frustration, and eventually Sarah began to retreat into her own world as well. Their children too noticed the change. Ethan had always been a devoted father, but now he seemed distant, distracted, and irritable. The joy he once took in playing with his kids or helping them with their homework had faded, replaced by a man who was constantly on edge, snapping at the smallest provocation. The warmth that had once filled their home was gone, replaced by a cold, heavy tension that no one could escape. Ethan's family was falling apart, and deep down, he knew that his inability to face his own demons was tearing them all down with him. While Ethan's life was unraveling, Tyler Lewis remained steady, guided by a quiet resolve that had been instilled in him by his father, Chief Marcus Lewis. Tyler had grown up understanding the challenges that came with being a black man in America, especially one in a position of privilege. His father had always taught him to carry himself with dignity and to face adversity with strength and composure. The incident with Ethan had tested those teachings, but Tyler had emerged from it more determined than ever. Tyler didn't harbor any ill will toward Ethan, but he also didn't shy away from holding the officer accountable for his actions. He understood that change wouldn't come from anger alone. It required patience, persistence, and a willingness to confront uncomfortable truths. Tyler had decided not to press charges or escalate the situation further, believing that his father's approach would have a more lasting impact on Ethan's behavior. At the same time, Tyler knew that the battle for justice was far from over. He was aware that his position and the privilege that came with being the police chief's son offered him protections that many others didn't have. This realization fueled his commitment to advocating for systemic change, both within the police force and in the broader community. Tyler's resolve wasn't just about his own experience. It was about ensuring that others wouldn't have to endure the same injustices in the future. The days that followed were some of the hardest Ethan had ever faced. The paranoia, the strain at home, and the constant pressure at work were beginning to wear him down. But amidst the turmoil, a small part of Ethan began to reflect on his actions. Not just the encounter with Tyler, but his entire approach to policing. For the first time in years, Ethan started to question the beliefs and assumptions that had guided him throughout his career. The conversations he overheard at the station, the cases he was assigned, and the growing distance between him and his family all forced Ethan to confront a reality he had long ignored. He had prided himself on being a tough but fair officer, but the truth was that he had allowed his biases to influence his actions more than he cared to admit. The encounter with Tyler had been a wake-up call, one that Ethan couldn't dismiss or forget. Ethan began to understand that his behavior wasn't just affecting those he encountered on the job, it was also tearing apart his personal life. The realization that his actions had far-reaching consequences was a bitter pill to swallow but it was also the first step toward change. Ethan knew he couldn't undo the past, but he could learn from it. Slowly, he started to let go of the defensiveness and denial that had kept him trapped in his old ways, opening himself up to the possibility of redemption. As Ethan's self-reflection deepened, he knew that he couldn't continue to avoid the consequences of his actions. The time had come to face the fallout from his encounter with Tyler head on. It was clear that Chief Lewis was giving him space to come to terms with what had happened. But Ethan also knew that this was not a reprieve. Sooner or later, he would have to confront the situation and take responsibility for his behavior. The thought of meeting with Chief Lewis again filled Ethan with dread. But he knew it was inevitable. He had avoided the chief as much as possible since their first meeting, but he couldn't hide forever. Ethan realized that he needed to speak with Chief Lewis, not as an officer trying to defend his actions, but as a man who understood the gravity of his mistakes. 
The only way forward was through honesty and accountability. When the day finally came, Ethan walked into Chief Lewis's office with a sense of resignation, but also a newfound resolve. He knew that the conversation ahead would be difficult, possibly even career-ending, but it was a conversation that needed to happen. Ethan took a deep breath and knocked on the door, ready to face the consequences of his actions and whatever came next. It was time to confront the truth, no matter how painful it might be. As Ethan sat across from Chief Lewis for the second time, the air in the room was thick with tension. Chief Lewis's expression was unreadable as he looked at Ethan, studying him carefully. This time there was no silence, no drawn-out pause to let the gravity of the situation sink in. Chief Lewis got straight to the point. Officer Brooks, he began, his tone firm but measured, I'm not interested in destroying your career, but I am interested in making sure you learn from this. Ethan listened intently, the weight of his earlier paranoia replaced by a heavy sense of responsibility. Chief Lewis went on to explain that while Tyler had chosen not to escalate the matter, the incident would not simply be brushed under the rug. You need to understand the impact of your actions, Lewis said, his voice unwavering. So, here's what's going to happen. You're going to be reassigned to community outreach for the next few months. You'll work directly with the people you serve, and you'll see firsthand the consequences of prejudice and bias in policing. The words hit Ethan hard. Community outreach was far from the tough, street-level work he was used to. It would be humbling, perhaps even humiliating, to face the very people he had spent his career policing. But as Chief Lewis spoke, Ethan realized that this was exactly what he needed. It wasn't a punishment, it was a chance to rebuild, to learn, and to grow. Chief Lewis wasn't just giving him a lesson in humility. He was offering him a lifeline, a chance to change and become a better man. Ethan's new assignment in community outreach forced him to confront the weight of his past mistakes on a daily basis. No longer shielded by the uniform and the authority it conferred, he found himself face to face with the very people his biases had wronged over the years. Every interaction was a reminder of the harm he had caused, both directly and indirectly, through his actions and attitudes. The experience was humbling, often painful, but it was also necessary. The first few weeks were the hardest. Ethan struggled with the transition, feeling out of place and unsure of how to connect with the community he was now tasked with serving. Many of the people he met were wary of him, their trust in the police long eroded by years of negative experiences. Ethan had to work to earn their trust, and it wasn't easy. He listened to their stories, stories of harassment, discrimination, and fear, and each one weighed heavily on his conscience. But as time went on, Ethan began to see the value in the work he was doing. He realized that the only way to move forward was to acknowledge his past mistakes and to do everything in his power to make amends. The weight of his actions still hung over him, but it no longer paralyzed him. Instead, it motivated him to be better, to do better. Slowly, the community began to respond to his efforts, and Ethan started to rebuild the bridges he had once burned. The work was far from over, but for the first time in a long while, Ethan felt like he was on the right path. As the weeks turned into months, Ethan began to notice a transformation within himself. The work in community outreach, though challenging, was changing him in ways he hadn't anticipated. The more he engaged with the community, the more he started to understand the perspectives of those he had once dismissed or ignored. His interactions with the people he met were no longer driven by a need to assert authority, but by a genuine desire to listen, to learn, and to help. Ethan's transformation didn't go unnoticed. His colleagues at the station, many of whom had once seen him as unyielding and rigid, began to see a different side of him. He was more patient, more thoughtful in his actions and decisions. The old arrogance that had once defined him was being replaced by a humility that came from understanding his own flaws and working to overcome them. Ethan was no longer the officer who had pulled over Tyler Lewis out of suspicion and bias. He was becoming someone who could truly serve his community. Even at home, the changes were apparent. The strain that had once plagued his family life was beginning to lift. As Ethan became more present, more attentive, and more open with his wife and children, the tension and paranoia that had once consumed him were gradually giving way to a newfound sense of peace. Ethan's transformation wasn't just about being a better officer. 
It was about being a better husband, father, and human being. The journey was far from over, but Ethan was committed to seeing it through. Despite the progress Ethan was making, there was still one confrontation that loomed large in his mind, facing Tyler Lewis once more. Throughout his transformation, Ethan had carried the weight of that initial encounter with him, knowing that he needed to make amends, but unsure of how to approach it. The memory of that night and the way he had treated Tyler haunted him, and he knew that his journey toward redemption wouldn't be complete until he addressed it directly. The opportunity finally came during a community event organized by the police department. Tyler was there, working alongside his father to help bridge the gap between the community and law enforcement. When Ethan saw him, his heart raced, a mix of anxiety and determination flooding through him. He knew this was his chance to make things right, or at least to start down that path. Gathering his courage, Ethan approached Tyler, his steps measured and purposeful. Tyler looked up as Ethan neared, his expression unreadable. Tyler, Ethan began, his voice steady despite the nerves he felt. I owe you an apology for everything that happened that night. I was wrong and I'm sorry. The words were simple, but they carried the weight of everything Ethan had learned over the past few months. This was the confrontation he had been avoiding, but now standing in front of Tyler, Ethan felt a sense of relief. He was finally taking responsibility, not just in words, but in action. Tyler listened carefully to Ethan's apology, his face remaining calm and thoughtful. There was a long pause after Ethan spoke, during which the weight of the moment hung between them. Tyler had seen many people in his life who had apologized without truly meaning it. But as he looked into Ethan's eyes, he could see that this was different. There was sincerity in Ethan's voice, a genuine recognition of the wrong that had been done, and a desire to make amends. Tyler nodded slowly, acknowledging Ethan's words. I appreciate your apology, Tyler said quietly, his tone measured. But you know that this isn't just about me. It's about everyone who's been through something similar. Everyone who didn't have the chance to confront what happened to them. Tyler's words were firm but not unkind. He wasn't interested in punishing Ethan. He was interested in seeing real change, not just in Ethan, but in the system that had allowed such encounters to happen in the first place. Ethan nodded, taking in Tyler's words. He understood now that redemption wasn't something he could achieve overnight. It was a process a journey that required continuous effort and reflection. Ethan knew he still had a long way to go, but the path ahead was clearer now. He was committed to doing the work, not just for Tyler, but for everyone who had been wronged by the same biases that had once guided him. Ethan was seeking redemption, and for the first time, he felt like he was on the right track. In the months that followed, Ethan's journey toward accountability and change continued. The lessons he had learned through his work in community outreach, his conversations with Tyler, and his own reflections had fundamentally altered the way he viewed his role as a police officer. No longer was it about enforcing the law through power and authority. It was about serving the community with integrity, fairness, and empathy. Chief Lewis kept a close eye on Ethan's progress, but he also allowed him the space to grow and learn from his experiences. The chief's approach was one of tough love holding Ethan accountable for his actions while also providing him with the opportunities to make amends and improve. Ethan had earned the chief's respect not through words but through actions, and it was clear that Lewis saw potential in Ethan that even Ethan hadn't seen in himself before. As time went on, Ethan became a vocal advocate for change within the department, using his own experiences as a cautionary tale for others. He spoke openly about his journey, acknowledging the mistakes he had made, and the biases he had held. His transformation became an example to his colleagues, showing that change was possible, but only if one was willing to confront uncomfortable truths and do the hard work of self-improvement. Ethan's path to accountability and change was far from over, but he was committed to walking it one step at a time with humility and determination.